Oh, hello, grade 12s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, O Abuti Wasos, O Kobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Rrrra. Okay, so we have question 5 on trigonometry. It says, given that sine 23 degrees is equal to root k, Determine in its simplest form the value of each of the following in terms of k without using a calculator. So if they say without using a calculator, then we know we must uh, solve this with the aid of a diagram. Right, so sine 23, 23 degrees is within the first quadrant. So we can just draw our right angle triangle here in the first quadrant and then look at this this is sine 23 degrees but then i'm just gonna go ahead and write it in terms of a fraction so this will be root k over one so we do know that if we just say divided by one we are not changing this we are simply writing it in terms of a fraction so that we can use our socato socatoa and then now we have opposite of a hypotenuse so that means root k is my opposite side and one is my hypotenuse side so if i have 23 degrees here my opposite is root k and then my hypotenuse is one now let me calculate here so when i calculate that this will be x squared r squared minus y squared so it's supposed to give me one squared minus a root k square so all of this will just give me one minus k and then since I have x squared, I have to square both sides. So my x is root 1 minus k, right? So you just come here and say 1 minus k, right? So obviously you would have done this somewhere on the side and then just come here and say root 1 minus k. Now, at this point, we can now try to solve this question. So the first thing that you want to do with this kind of questions is that you want to fill in your diagram. And then that's when you can start uh, trying to attempt to solve the questions. Now, we are given sine 23, meaning everything in here must be expressed to the angle 23. We have sine 203 here, which using our reduction formulas, we can then end up with sine 180 degrees plus 23 which still gives you 203 degrees. So I did not change it. I simply wrote it in terms of reduction formulae. Then how is sine in the third quadrant? We know that sine in the third quadrant is negative. So this will be negative sine 23 degrees. But then we already know that sine 23 degrees is root K. So negative sine 23 degrees would have to be negative root K. That's how you obtain your two marks, right? So probably a mark for this and a mark for that. Then um, cos 23. For cos, we know applying our soccer tower, we know that cos is adjacent of our hypotenuse. So our adjacent, we already have it here. So let's just go with this is cos 23. It will give us adjacent is root 1 minus k. But then our hypotenuse is 1. So all of that divided by 1, that's just root 1 minus k. Right. So you are done. Three marks like that. So obviously they might have taken a mark from your diagram there because remember at first you didn't have this. So it is very crucial that you draw uh, that uh, right angle triangle there or that diagram because sometimes they take the marks from there. Now 5.1.3 we are to calculate uh, the value of tan negative 23 degrees but we know tan of a negative angle is negative so that's negative tan 23 degrees but tan is opposite of adjacent so my opposite is what so i have negative and then opposite is root k and then adjacent is root 1 minus k so just like that you have your two marks you have completed it so that's all you needed to do to get uh, that seven marks there. Awesome. Okay, now 5.2 says simplify the following expression to a single trigonometric function. We are given uh, all of this and then we should just have one uh, trigonometric function. Right, then let's uh, 
try to solve this we have cos of a negative angle we know that cos of a negative angle is positive so this will be 4 cos x and then this here is a core function so we say how is cos in this second quadrant it is negative therefore its core function will be negative sine x right so note how i do that then looking at this you don't want to end up with a something that will be a whole lot of a paragraph or a long sentence there you need remember with this you are trying to make a, that whole big thing into a smaller thing right so you need to be very careful with these questions here if you were to look at this right here you can see that this resembles something of a compound angle here looking at this this is angle a this is angle b now the same angle a and this is angle b if we were to visit our compound angles here you would see exactly what we are talking about looking at this we can see we have sine a plus b and then this is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b let's have a look at this again this is sine a cos b cos a sine a sine b right so it's just like that meaning we need to reduce all of this to sine bracket a plus b so our angle a is represented by 30 degrees minus x and then plus our angle b is represented by x now just like that you have reduced it to a single trig trigonometric ratio so here positive times negative we have negative 4 and then i'm just gonna go ahead and start with sine x and then write cos x there's a reason why i'm doing that then negative x plus x this is sine and then 30 degrees why did i write it as sine x cos x it's because i want to manipulate here let me factor out negative 2 from this one then i will be left with 2 sine x and then cos x now i did not change anything mathematically because negative 2 times 2 is still negative 4 but then why did i choose to write it like this it's because i'm looking at something here which is particularly a double angle look at this double angle here we can see that our double angle sine 2x is expressed as 2 sine x cos x which is exactly this so i can reduce all of this to one trigonometric ratio of sine 2x then uh, below here I have sine 30 degrees which is a special angle we know that sine 30 degrees is 1 over 2 right it's a no-brainer then negative 2 this is sine 2x and then divided by half now negative 2 divided by half that gives me negative 4 and then sine 2x double angle and just like that I have solved this to a single trigonometric function that's your solution right there easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> okay let's proceed okay so now we have 5.3 it says determine the general solution of cos 2x minus 7 cos x minus 3 and then we can see here that we have a double angle that can be broken down into three different ways which poses a problem for us because now we have to decide which one of this would be a uh, more correct to use so we have cos squared x minus sine squared x 2 cos squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x right so now we have to decide which one of these three should we use a uh, in respect to this question here now the one thing that you always have to check when it comes to this type of question here is your middle term so we can see that our middle term here is given in terms of cos x so that means it would make a lot of sense to break this one here in terms of cos because in that way we would only be working with one trig function or one trig ratio so that's what we want to achieve here we want to uh, achieve a status where we only work with one trig ratio right so we have cos 2x and this can be broken down to 2 cos squared x minus 1 right then let's just go ahead and solve this so this is 2 cos squared x minus 1 and then we have this minus 7 cos x and then minus 3 equal to 0 
now solving this we can see this is 2 cos squared x and then minus 7 cos x the negative 1 minus 3 that's minus 4 is equal to 0. now looking at this we can see that this is now in quadratic form right it is more of a parabola then that means all we can do here is try to factorize now do not be intimidated again uh, by the fact that we have our trig ratios there this is the same as you having 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. So the very same way you'd be solving this is the very same way you'd, you will solve that. So with this, if I was given this, I would say 2x and then here this would be plus 1 and then I would have x minus 4, right? And then equal to 0. So that means in respect to this, this is 2 cos x then plus 1. So you can see, assuming that my x is cos x then it makes sense then this is a uh, cos x minus 4 equal to 0 so this will be cos x is equals to negative 1 over 2 or cos x is equals to 4 so you get what I did here now with this one here we know that uh, the range for our cos graph and a uh, sine graph is always in between negative 1 to positive 1 so if we ever see a number that will be greater than 1 or less than negative 1 then we simply say this is not applicable so even if you were trying to calculate the angle here then your calculator will just tell you math error so that means you wouldn't have any solution for this one here so we need to uh, continue with this here but before you do I need you to note something right before you continue with that, I need you to just note something here. And uh, note that the the value that we have here is negative. And then now we need to calculate our reference angle. In calculating your reference angle, you do not substitute this negative here. This negative is only telling you about which quadrants you need to choose. So we need to choose where the quadrants where cos is negative. So we know that cos is negative in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. That's what the negative is telling us here. Choose the quadrants where your cos is negative. But in calculating your reference angle, this is what you do. You say cos x is equal to 1 over 2 as a positive like that. And then calculate your, your reference angle like that. So this is cos uh, inverse of cos 1 over 2. This is x is equal to 60 degrees. And then immediately you say this is your reference angle. Now, you go back to the fact that you had a negative here. So this was telling you that you need to pick the second quadrant and the third quadrant because that's where you have your cos being negative. Now in the second quadrant, what are our solution? So the second quadrant will say x is equals to 180 degrees minus our reference angle because we know the reduction formula for the second quadrant is 180 minus theta. So that's plus k360 degrees so what are we using we are using this so second quadrant we have 180 minus theta third quadrant we have 180 plus theta so this will give us 120 degrees plus k360 degrees where k is an element of integers then uh, the solutions for the third quadrant will now be x is equals to 180 degrees plus 60 degrees plus k360 and then what is 180 plus 60 that's a uh, 240 degrees and then plus k360 degrees and then again we say where k is an element of integers so these are the two general solutions that you have in the second quadrant you have that in the third quadrant you have this right so that's how you were supposed to uh, tackle this question here so understand that a uh, point about the negative here because a lot of you make mistakes in terms of calculating your reference angle and then it affects your whole general solutions right so make sure that you pay attention to that then um, let's proceed to 5.4 okay then um, we are given in 5.4 that sine theta is equals to 1 over 3 and then it says calculate the numerical value of sine 3 theta without using a calculator so we know if it says without using a calculator then we must uh, depend on the aid of the diagram right so having to work out with this one let's draw our uh, 
right angle triangle here and then if this is theta we know that sine is opposite of a hypotenuse so this is one and then three here having to calculate the value here for x we'll just go x squared is equals to r squared minus y squared now this will be three squared minus one square which will give us a value of eight but then remember we have x squared here if we square both sides our x is root eight and then let's just fit it in here so we have root 8 and then let's try to calculate remember we are trying to get the numerical value for sine 3 deeds so uh, how are we going to do that we can just try to write this sine 3 theta in terms of the compound angle and break it down like this this will be sine 2 theta plus theta which still gives you 3 theta but then i just tried to write it in terms of the compound angles so this will be sine 2 theta and then cos theta plus cos 2 theta and then here this is sine theta right so if we are to break this one down uh, since it's a double angle it will give us 2 sine theta and then cos theta and then here this is multiplied by this cos theta here then let's just write this the way it is and then sine theta like that multiplying all of this uh, the cos theta and cos theta will obviously gives us two sine theta and then cos squared theta now that i have this i can try to break down my double angle here for cos in terms of two cos squared theta minus one and then multiply that by sine theta so okay when i have this this will be two sine theta and then cos squared theta now at this point i must say sine theta multiplied by this which will give me two sine theta and then cos squared theta if i say sine theta multiplied by negative one this is negative sine theta right so okay this here i like terms so look at this we have like terms here so these are like terms and then they have the same sign positive positive so that means they can add uh, together so this will be 4 sine theta and then cos squared theta but then we have minus sine theta there right at this point we can see that sine theta and sine theta are common factors so we just factor it out sine theta this will be 4 cos squared theta and then minus one remember uh, we do have the value for sine theta according to uh, what we are given here we were told that it is one over three and then here this is four but cos squared theta can now be uh, found using this diagram here remember cos is adjacent of a hypotenuse so this is our adjacent side and this is our hypotenuse side so that means we have root eight over three but then remember it's squared then minus one now if you were to work out this one this would end up giving you 23 over 27 right so i'm just writing out uh, the final answer now note that you can just even punch all this in your calculator even if they said without the use of a calculator but then at that point when you reach that point you you are allowed to use the calculator for just finding your your answer there right then um that's 23 over 27 so that's how you were supposed to tackle this question guys Please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And then also if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.